Колеги, доброго дня. Український кризовий медіа... Good afternoon, it's my colleagues. We are going to continue our work in the topic of our next press briefing. How much Ukrainians are willing to sell the awards or the awards for and what they are ready to trade it for. Uh, speakers are Viktor Teran, chairman of the Center for Political Studies and Analysis, and Dmitry Ostapchuk, um, a Ukraine researcher. Max, Max, we are a Ukraine researcher. Uh, good afternoon. Before we start our presentation, I would show you the results of our research. I would like to, to, to introduce to you Yulia Tunuk. She is going to give us the results for the Kyiv, city of Kyiv, modern city youth organization. Uh, why this research? Why we uh, developed this idea? And how everything um, uh, was developing? Unfortunately, uh, this campaign, the election campaign for the local authorities, uh, we can say that they, uh, it has become cleaner as compared to the previous ones and all those negative things like trying to bribe the voters uh, and the, to somehow to exercise some effect or impact on the uh, press of elections. But anyway, it came uh, up with uh, some kind of correlation to introduce the correlation regarding the results of the local um, elections, local authorities elections. And about 10 to 15 um, percent of the voters actually had a very significant impact on the results of the election. So we tried to to study um, how many Ukrainians are ready to sell their votes for how much, and whether um, this decision of yours could uh, affect the results of the election. So, so what we did, we united our efforts with our. Uh, Vox Ukraine um, organization, and, and they helped us to uh, drop a special form to provide some um, kind of polling. And uh, by the way, as I mentioned before, you I represent here the state of Kiev. So we uh, actually we decided to, to to interview people in the street. We asked the people very simple um, questions whether they were prepared to sell their votes, for how much, and what is important. We remember that, uh, the, you know, bribing the, the different formats, it was money or in the new envelopes or such, or, when, or indirect messages when they use some kind of budgetary or some kind of concealed or hidden uh, pecuniary resources, they actually, they would, uh, meaning they would invest in some kind of facelift in the city or providing some kind of the facilities, sports facilities or play stations for, for children in the yard. So, so we just want to see um, are the people potentially ready to uh, forge or to falsify the results of uh, the results of elections. There is some of the formats, a kind of car uh, merry-go-round, a carousel, when we just and, uh, several uh, times we visit different uh, polling stations, or let's say the scarf um, you, you, you know, when somebody, they do not vote and they are not taken into account. And when you approach a specific member of the committee, and that they, for example, that you are going to vote for a specific candidate, you can vote for this person, and Mitra is going to, to talk about that and, and, and explain how we measure this specific component. Uh, we had more than uh, 1,200 respondents, and unfortunately, 30% of Ukrainians potentially are prepared and are ready and willing to sell their votes. They, they declared uh, point blank that they were ready to vote for those who are going to, were going to pay money to them. Uh, two thirds of them were honest to, were, were honest to say uh, when they receive money, they will think it, uh, think, think once again whether they were going to vote for this candidate or not. And one third said that they are going to take, were going to take the money and vote for somebody else. You know, so if we take a relation, 10, 15 percent of our votes of those who are going to take part in during the elections, this is the potential, um, uh, let's say, avoid uh, for those who are going to vote for this or another candidate. In another picture, you can see that the people are ready to sell their votes in different regions of Ukraine, in the northern or eastern or southern, um, and the, 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 the biggest amount of money, 675, uh, Grimnia and the lowest, 500. Why so? Because we had two versions. 
in the Western Ukraine because of the historical and um, other traditions. They are prepared, uh, not, not so much prepared to uh, sell their uh, wounds. That's why the cost or the price for that is higher. In the central parts of Ukraine, there is a different uh, economic situation. The culture is uh, different. Now has different, uh, say, tints and hues. And um, so the price of one vote drops here. There are more people going to do that. So you may consider that 40% of the voters are prepared to um, sell their votes for indirect uh, bribing, so to say, some kind of play uh, grounds for the children, um, facelift on the schools or equipping the schools, something, etc. But the, those people who, um, the, the number who are prepared for the indirect bribing are less. In, so 40, 42% uh, people are prepared to uh, to sell their votes. They want to, to get the money here and, and now, you know. So now my uh, colleague is going to tell you more about that. Uh, good afternoon. General speaking, there is a very interesting uh, issue how the direct methods of stimulating the voters, whether it's of efficient or not. Maybe there are some other indirect techniques or methods through financing, let's say, hospitals or donations to, or some other tools used. And it turned out to be that the direct financing of the electorate is rather efficient method, is the most popular one. So uh, the figures speak for themselves. Almost 20% of those who agreed to take money uh, for voting for a certain candidate, they also are prepared to um, uh, take a picture of their, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, ballot and bring and show that um, uh, picture who they voted for. 28% uh, are prepared to do that for additional, for extra money. Um, as for example, they receive the money for voting the specific, for the specific candidate, but to provide this kind of verification tool or proof or evidence. So um, they are prepared to be involved in falsification or you know, for, for falsifying this law um, and they violate the law. Uh, and this is a big figure and the, you know, and the message how to, how to fight this phenomenon, this is a, maybe will be the subject matter of the next research. Comparison of the figure shows the following. There is a social stream organization in June. They carried out their research and they uh, asked the people how many people and for what amount of money they are prepared to sell their votes. 58% of the uh, voters were prepared to do that and this is too much. Uh, for the average price of um, uh, 500 grivna, uh, our average price is um, uh, 500 data. It may be, maybe maybe it's because of the inflation rate. We, right, we don't know why. What's the reason for that? If you compare Ukraine, for example, with the Russian Federation, how many people there are ready uh, to sell their votes for money? There is a very interesting uh, and well-known center, Levada Center. According to their uh, their research in uh, in the end of October this year, which uh, showed that 17% of the Russian population or Russian citizens um, were prepared to sell their votes uh, for the equivalent of 1,800 grivna, so about 5,000 plus uh, Russian rubles. Why 17% uh, as compared to Ukraine, this is not a big figure. And why for more money, it's very difficult to say now. Maybe we have a, a lower um, uh, let's say, uh, lifestyle level. And what is also important regarding the methods of, of falsification or uh, fraud, fraud uh, mechanism, almost uh, 7%, they actually, they, 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 they agreed to take their ballot from the polling station out of the polling station. 10% 10, 10 excuse me it means that potential those 10% are prepared to participate in the so-called merry-go-round going from one uh, polling station to another uh, and, uh, in this way to uh, visit several polling stations 4% um, uh, agreed to, the, to vote under a different name why uh, this number is uh, two times uh, lower. Maybe this can be accounted for that this method of, false, of falsification more 
complicated the research and opinion. And now uh, maybe uh, some results for the city of Kyiv. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, speaking about the city of Kyiv, uh, they are very much similar to the uh, general, all the figures in all, all over Ukraine. The only uh, thing that they, you're talking about Kyiv and other region, regions polled, about 80% of those polled um, Kyiv citizens, they are prepared to sell their votes. So this um, uh, figure is much higher than uh, the average over Ukraine, all over Ukraine. Uh, maybe because we had a, a bigger number of those uh, interviewed, and a lot of students actually are included in this polling effort. And you remember there were uh, some centers of different fraudulent actions, especially in the uh, in the Galusivsky district of Kyiv. As regards, generally speaking, polling as, as per se, the majority of people are going to support Vitaly Klitschko, 54%, and Ruslav Bereza, 26%. That's why the average figure of those people who are ready to uh, sell their votes for the different candidates, for Klitschko, this figure is, uh, is higher 11% than for Borislav. So if he uh, offered them the money, they were more willing to agree to, to, to vote for him than for uh, uh, Borislav Beroz. So we cannot understand this logic of the citizens, but it exists. You know, what's more interesting, that the citizens are becoming more uh, more knowledgeable and they're more, more thinking about that, that they're not going, uh, they're not prepared to be involved in some of uh, and these fraudulent actions or machinations. So the, uh, the the situation in Ukraine has changed for 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 better. I mean, uh, over the last few years, in Kyiv, 82 are agreed, and those who do not want to sell their votes, 18 percent only. A very interesting figure could be the fact that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, that uh, about 30 percent of the people are prepared to take the ballot out of the polling stations premises. Uh, 17 are then in down, it's still doubtful, and uh, they're, they're great to do that for something between 50 and 500 grivnia. So when we ask them what some money they would agree to sell their vote, on the average is five. 100 uh, grivnia for Klitschko, for Bereslav Bereza, uh, 300 or 400 grivnia. Those were kind of um, priceless. Um, just summing up, we can see that, you know, the, the varying factor of uh, buying the votes could con constitute between tw 10 and 20 percent. This is a considerable amount, you know. And the, the most terrible, what we can say, that the authorities are not prepared at all and do not want to fight this phenomenon. I would like to remind you that back in August, they prepared the amendments on the part of the public organizations and NGOs, which were submitted to the Verkhovna Rada with the request to to consider those and adopt them, especially those who work in Chernigov. Unfortunately, the MPs declined this request. And those who actually um, approached the presidential administration, they, they neither they could or nor they were able to put it through the parliament. So we cannot say that these elections are better than the previous one. The results are distorted because we can say that we are talking about the, the this correlation of, um, uh, shows that most likely uh, the people are very much affected by those financial um, uh, uh, fraudulent actions and perhaps the uh, elections which are going to take place in a few um, days from now will be uh, falsified. So uh, if Verkhovna uh, Rada fails to introduce amendments into the criminal code or some other legislative regulations, this situation will uh, change for the worse. And the number of those people who are, um, they will try to votes who, who's there will try to buy will increase and the uh, number of those who will be ready to sell their votes because they believe um, they they need money here and now and, and another funny slogan uh, they do not invest money into the uh, district but into specific people this is much more efficient this is one of the slogans you know thank you
Any questions? And introduce yourself to Antivich Gama. Uh, what is the age bracket uh, of those people who you interviewed between 18 and 50 years of age? Different age uh, groups, yeah? And what the public uh, organization NGOs propose what to change or to amend which kind of the laws and what specifically? Well, the simple answer is today is very difficult procedural uh, component. When a, a person sells his or her voice or vote, we have to prove that this person wanted to do that. You could say that I just was walking with a package of papers and that's it. But if we uh, caught him or her red-handed, that means that he, uh, he or she priori is guilty and he has to prove that he is not guilty or she is not guilty. This is uh, most important. It's, you know, I, I met with my colleagues and, for example, they, they, they had some the bags with the candidates we said hey, it's uh, you know it's kind of incidental or accidental whatever, but we know this is a kind of attempt of bribing. Today there is an efficient mechanism in place, and perhaps you know that yesterday or the day before yesterday in Chernivtsi, three uh, students were uh, sentenced or let's say charged, uh, charged and convicted for uh, bribing. And actually, the, the, uh, the, this thing already works there, but it's very difficult to prove. The miss, uh, some kind of miss, uh, the minor. Um, I have a few questions to you. What is the principle based? Uh, well, well, when we selected those twelve cities, if I am not mistaken, at this question number one, number two. Please explain to me to the person who is not well aware of you know, this kind of polling mechanism. Uh, did you take in consideration that the answer is that yes, they were prepared to buy their, to sell their woes, or no, they were not prepared, maybe they were, were not telling the truth. Did you take this possibility into consideration when <clears throat> given the results? Twelve cities, taking in consideration that we have very much limited resources, the major uh, factor uh, which we had to take in consideration to select the Different cities and different regions in Ukraine, north, south, east, and west, and center. We had five regions, and we had one, uh, two or three cities in each. <clears throat> and again, how to, to understand whether the respondent gives a true answer or not? Maybe yes, but we did not take that into consideration. We did not take it into consideration because this is rather complicated approach. The, the, the form is rather is not an easy. It must be developed in such a way that there, you could immediately tell whether the person lies or tells the truth. So we did not take that into account. We be, believe that the, the hidden number of the people, concealed number of the people, is much more. But uh, maybe you will tell more about that when our respondents uh, working in the and uh, when they took us for the uh, for the uh, people of the team of the candidates, they said, "Okay, we can we can uh, sell our votes to you." Okay, yes, indeed, and they were uh, absolutely prepared to cooperate and to discuss specific sums of money to be paid to them. Uh, he said, uh, for example, somebody said, I'm, "I'm ready to sell my vote for three thousand hryvnia," but again, uh, such cases were about three maximum. In, in Kiev, we polled or interviewed one, 221 persons, and 106 are not prepared to, to do that. So 46% will not participate in the elections campaign anyway. And 52%, if they offer money of this number, if somebody offers them money, they will go, come and vote. And okay, one more question. When can we have this kind of infographics? Do we have such information somewhere in online? Uh, I hear that somebody mentioned that uh, on the website of the center of um, um, Vox Ukraine, and uh, when we are going to uh, to generate our real press release, maybe you could send us this information. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of our briefing, and see you next time. Please disseminate this information because this is very important uh, on the eve of the elections. And the last briefing uh, will take place in several minutes from now at uh, half past two.